Bak Jr. Sargon is here, opinion editor for Newsweek, author of Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. I, I, I'm wondering if I'm being fair in drawing the comparison between the P. Diddy crowd and the Butker crowd. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the Ferris show on television, Leland. It's great to be here with you and your viewers. Um, the first point I'll make is we don't know that women are buying those shirts, right? We know that the women's sizes have sold out, right? It's totally okay, fair enough. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Have bought this shirt for their wives. Um, you know, to me, um, the outrage that's been generated around his speech and the culture war that's developing, right, where the right is defending him and the left is attacking him for suggesting that women not work or that women, you know, see their true vocation as being wives and mothers, sort of is a smokescreen for the economic reality in which many women would love to stay home and raise their children, would love to work part-time and focus on their families, but it is not economically viable in the economy that was created by a handshake agreement between right and left. And so to me, this kind of outrage machine, both the outrage on the left and the defense on the right is simply a way of us still not talking about the fact that you can no longer afford to sustain a family on a single income. Although, of course, for Butker, that's not a problem. He's very wealthy. Right. Right. And I guess the extension to that, right, is that in the 1960s, the 1970s, certainly the 1950s, it was very possible to have a middle class family with a male breadwinner and a wife who stayed home. That's sort of you know, the way the way the world worked back then. Uh, good points that left and right agreed to basically eliminate that economy. And neither neither side side media, if you will, or side taking media wants to call that out. But what I can't figure out is the intellectual dishonesty, right? And maybe that's just there's no shame in the hypocrisy, but of Butker being so terrible in people's eyes and shaming him for not telling all women to stay home, but saying if women want to stay home, they should be celebrated, fine. Um, and then at the same time, the same media is the one who celebrated and defended P. Diddy, who objectified women and degraded women and belittled women, and now we know beat women in a way that was far, far worse than anything Butker ever said or did. And the actual parallel is even starker, Leland, because the second half of Butker's speech, he said, I have a message now for the young men out there. Be fathers, be engaged, be in your home, take care of your children, take pride in your masculinity, and take pride in fatherhood. And of course, we know that children being born out of wedlock is a scourge on lower income Americans, especially black Americans, but it's spreading to all lower income Americans. So that was a really important piece of the puzzle. And I think that the, there on the left, you really have a point because they refuse to talk about this issue, the breakdown of the black family, the fact that there is so much dysfunction which is now spreading and it's a real problem because the number one predictor for downward mobility for children is not having a father in the home. And so he really did speak that language and that is something the left will never talk about. Look, it's also the number one indicator of downward mobility, but also of going to jail um, in mm -hmm. terms of whether you come from a, a broken family uh, or a household in a family with two parents um, in the home. But why among this very same crowd, Acosta and the rest of his crew, is there until a video comes out, the video of Diddy beating his girlfriend, why is it that they are allowed to say the most vile, misogynistic, awful things in rap lyrics, and not only is it defended, but it's celebrated by these people? It's a really good question. I mean... <laughs> They have to define that cultural elite because they've really thrown their lot in there with them. And again, you know, as you know, I always see things in terms of like the marketplace and the market forces. And rich people are Democrats now, they're liberals. And, you know, the media, the music industry, um, Hollywood, all of our cultural elites are very much embracing those leftist values. And there's this kind of circling the wagons where they cannot imagine that one of their own would have been, been engaged in exactly what all of their music was telling us they were engaged in. Yeah, it was Maya Angelou who said, uh, when someone tells you who they are, believe them the first time. So there you go. Uh, it's good to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy enjoy a restful day and we'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below. 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.